Hello, uh, I'm Oscar, I'm from Julia Hub. And I am Jose Giordano from UCL. Uh, we are going to be talking about fixed sized arrays. Uh, this is a new package uh, that implements um, a array that has a, a runtime fixed size, uh, but is still mutable. Uh, so in terms of why we did this, uh, in 1.11, uh, Jameson and I gave a talk on the new memory type. Um, and memory is really good, but it's only a 1D collection. So sometimes you want matrices, sometimes you want higher dimensional arrays. Um, and in math, um, arrays are a very common abstraction. Uh, and like in math, you'll have like an RN array, and those do not change their size. Uh, and furthermore, mutability is really hard for compilers to reason about. So if you uh, take the size of an array at two different points in time, uh, the compiler needs to know that uh, nothing in between changed the size uh, because in our Julia array, that size is changeable. And also because array is mutable in Julia so that you can change what size it is, um, that means that the actual array uh, struct needs some allocations in addition to the memory. Yeah, so we created this um, uh, package which implements this uh, fixed size array, uh, which has the same memory layout as the uh, standard array. Um, so it's also a, a subtype of a dense array. And, but uh, the difference with array is that it's uh, immutable instead of being mutable. So the uh, fields of this type are memory. Uh, memory is, uh, can actually be any backend. It's not just the memory type. It can also be like a GPU array if you want. And, uh, and also the size, which uh, like in the standard array, uh, it's an n tuple. But uh, again, since this is a field of a, a immutable struct, this is always constant for the compiler. And this is a um, comparison uh, with other array types in, in the ecosystem. So there is a, a base dot array, which has the size set at, at runtime. The data backend is memory, and it's both growable, and uh, the elements can be uh, mutated. Instead, the fixed size array that we um, created um, also has the memory, uh, the, the size that can be set at runtime is backed by memory, but it's not growable, so you cannot change the size. Uh, but the elements can be changed. Uh, also very popular are the uh, MRA and SRA from staticarrays.jl, but they both have the size that has to be set at compile time. Uh, the data backend is a tuple instead of a memory. Um, they are not growable, but the S array also cannot mutate the elements. Um, so now to showcase some of the performance you can get out of this. Uh, for this like, relatively simple example, we're uh, create benchmarking uh, creating arrays versus fixed sized arrays of different sizes and testing how long it takes to create the uh, object and to fill it with random numbers, or fill it with zeros, it? in fact. Um, and you can see that uh, one very nice thing is that for a zero-sized fixed-sized array, uh, there's no uh, compile time, or no allocations for it. Um, ah, that will work better. Um, whereas for an array, you have the 32-byte header, um, uh, which is just like the array struct that wraps the memory. And then you can see that even for bigger sizes, uh, the amount of allocation is not much uh, different because it's only a 32-byte array header either way, but you do have one extra allocation each time, and that takes a couple extra nanoseconds. It looks like it, on this computer it was about four nanoseconds uh, to allocate the array that you just saved by not allocating memory. Um, uh, another case is um, constant propagation of length. So we take the length of a, uh, an array, um, and then we call a function which creates an array and asks for, for this length. And if you use vector, uh, the compiler has to generate all the, uh, uh, first to uh, uh, create um, the uh, uh, memory, allocate the memory, and then does lots of work just to get to the size which you should know already. Uh, instead, when you use fixed size array, uh, the, the, the code. Yes, it's just three. <laughs> yeah. Um, and these types of optimizations won't come up always, but they are the sort of thing that when you're building packages, it just makes it easier to write the code that you mean, and then the compiler will figure out what to do with it a lot of the time. Um, you can also see that for a simple reshape case, uh, we managed to prove uh, with fixed sized arrays um, that if you reshape a length three array to size two by two, uh, we're able to show that this just throws an error, um, whereas uh, you can see it's marked for a regular array. It's not consistent because the compiler doesn't know whether or not that will succeed or not. Um, 
And also, if you have a length four, uh, we can prove that it doesn't throw an error, whereas for a regular array, uh, the compiler still doesn't know whether or not reshaping a length four vector to a two by two matrix is valid. Another example is, uh, uh, thanks also to some work by uh, Oscar to uh, improve the escape analysis, uh, we can uh, define a function which allocates a, a um, vector of 250 elements, uh, fills with random uh, numbers, and then um, takes the sum uh, using the fold function. Uh, if you use as input a, a base.vector, uh, this needs to allocate 264 bytes. Uh, instead, if you use a fixed size array, memory allocations are just completely uh, removed. Um, but one important thing, uh, why we use fold uh, instead of sum, is because the interprocedural um, uh, escape analysis is not yet implemented, so this is maybe some uh, work for the future, so uh, if you use sum, in this case, the memory allocations will not be uh, removed. Uh, and also, the size 250 is specific because <laughs> if you made this 260, it would be bigger than the size heuristic that we're willing to move to the stack, and therefore it doesn't work. Um, so we also need to implement uh, gave, uh, most of this work was Gabriel and then me sitting along and uh, handing him more LVM that was failing to optimize and him spending hours digging through figuring out what went wrong. Um, but we, for a lot of the very simple cases, we now already in one, I think this is 1.12? 1 1.13. Oh yeah, this is 1.13. Um, so it's not coming for a couple months yet, but we eventually can get rid of the allocations in many of the simple cases. Uh, another example is uh, using enzyme to compute the gradient of a function. Um, if you use memory, uh, sorry, the dot, um, base dot vector in this case, uh, um, and then try uh, with a fixed size array, you see that there is a 2x almost boost of performance. This is not something that you should always expect, but this was like the first thing that I tried and said, oh, this is already 2x faster. So that was uh, fun. Uh, but yeah, in some cases, you will get not better performance, but still. Uh, for example, right before this talk, I checked whether or not an ordinary FEQ solve was faster. It wasn't. It's like 20% slower. So I need to debug why that's happening. Um, but yeah, for our conclusions, uh, we think you should use this. This is a, it's a very new package, but it is also very simple. It's only about 100 lines of code. I think we have 100% test coverage. Um, but the array interface in Julia is not very well defined, so we might, you might find a case if you try something out where we do not implement part of this like, so there's like the minimal array interface which is get index, send index, and size. And if you implement that, everything works. Uh, but then it turns out there's about 20 or 30 other things that you need to implement if you want it to be as fast as array for all of the cases. So we should probably document what all of those are um, so that other people can write arrays that are as fast as base.array. Um, but I think, we think this package is mostly here, and let us know if you find a case where it's not. Yep. Um, and then also, we want um, to extend the compiler analyses. Uh, so uh, Shuhei has written a very nice interprocedural escape analysis in Julia uh, that we've had in the Julia repo for about two years and is not used currently. So a great hackathon project, if you're looking for one, is hooking this up. Uh, and then also, once after you've hooked this up, we need to teach Julia about um, uh, the Julia escape analysis about memory because it just doesn't really know that memory exists, so it can't uh, escape that at the Julia level. It's only at the LLVM level. Um, and just as a personal note, um, I for a long time have wished that uh, Julia had a separate array type uh, that was a multi-dimensional fixed-sized collection and a list type, which would be a single-dimensional growable collection. Um, we obviously can't change this in Julia 1.0. We probably can't change this in Julia 2.0. It would be way too breaking, even if we ever made a 2.0, because um, people, it turns out, like using arrays. Um, but yeah, uh, this gives you that if you're willing to not have the like array syntax. And I think we have time for one or one question, maybe? Yeah. Thanks for the talk. I, I use static arrays a lot because of performance. It performs way better in many situations. 
We do have this kind of performance in use. These are is not possible. No, these are not static arrays. Um, so specifically, these still are memory backed, so they still will uh, be heap allocated unless the compiler can uh, do intra procedural, not inter procedural analysis uh, to delete that. Um, we have some ideas for how we might be able to make the compiler smarter here, but they are mostly not implemented yet. Okay, thanks. In your last example, I noticed you had fixed an array around RAND. How did you prevent RAND from allocating before it got called by the fixed static array? I think it did allocate an array, and then the compiler is smart enough in some very limited circumstances to remove it.